Okay, so from here, what we've done so far is we've created a connection to the database. So if we go into the browser, take a look at our page, if I hit refresh, when we do a view page source, you'll see our connection established code has appeared. So we are now communicating to the database here. Okay, so we have an ID and name. So what we want to do now is we want to actually add the information into the system. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to code up a form that's going to collect the information and add page to put it into the database well collect the information from the form then we're going to write a function that will put it into the database so to start with let's create this form so we're going to jump in and use Emmet like so that'll put in all of our HTML then from here we're going to put in a form we're going to use post we're going to send it through to pages slash add.php this page doesn't exist quite yet, but it will in a sec. Two inputs, we're going to basically make an input of text. The name will be, uh, let's just call it username. And we'll change this to a placeholder. We'll say, and username. And then from here, we'll put a line break after that. And we'll put an input of type submit. And here we'll say, add user. And that's how complicated the form actually is. So we've got to make sure we always include a name here, otherwise the system's not going to capture it. Now this is where we're sending it to, this is how we're sending it, so i.e. which version of memory we're putting into play. So now we're going to create this page. So if we click into root, so notice how the folder's outside is going blue, we can go new folder, go pages, and then we'll go add.php. Now, inside here, let's just take a copy of this, speed things up a little bit. We want to make sure we have a connection to the database and a connection to the function. So we want to dot dot slash here, because what we're doing is we're going from the add page to the root folder into the functions page, and then we'll find functions. This is what the dot dot means. We only need to do it when we're going out of folders into the root folder. From here, we want to see what we've captured. To do that, we use this function called show mem. So let's write that first. So we'll come over here, scroll that up, up, and let's go function show mem. Now, show mem is going to be one of these useful functions that you're going to keep for a while, mainly because it's a great way of seeing what's in memory when we use forms and other such elements on all pages. Uh, let's put it into say h4s. So take a copy of that. Paste, paste. And here we're going get memory. Post memory. And session memory. So these are the three types of memory that we want to use. And to see it, we use a print underscore r command. As such, looks better if you put the t on the end. Let's go print, print r, print also underscore post, semicolon, print underscore r, bracket, dollar sign, session. Okay, so now we can put some information into our form here. It's going to go to the add page here, and we should see exactly what turns up in memory. So let's go to our browser. We go here, refresh. Here's our form. Let's put in Scott. Click add, and here's our information being shown here. As you can see, we have a username called Scott. From here, what we want to do is we actually now want to go back to our code here, and then we want to collect it. So it's coming into a we'll put it into a variable called dollar sign username because we know it's coming from post, and we're using the name username to capture it. So that matches this point here. So that name there goes into here. 
then we're going to go insert item. Now, this is going to be a function. To do this, we're going to send over the database, the database connect, and the information we've got, and username, like so. These are the two elements that we need. So let's save that here. The easy way to remember, so you don't make typos, is you copy that, come into here, and then we go function paste, like so. Now we write the SQL for it. Dollar sign SQL equals insert into, now we put in the table. So that table that we're putting stuff into, so if you take a look at the database, this table is users, and we have an ID and a name. Into users, bracket ID, common name. So the system knows where we're putting information. Then we tell it what we're putting in, and we go values. Now the first value is null, because the ID is auto-incrementing, so this tells the system, let's trigger that and put it over. And then the next part is where we put the data that we're sending through. Note the single quotes around it, that's because we want to put what's inside the variable, not the variable itself. So once we type this in, notice it should be my SQL I. Then from here, we'll run an if statement on the connection, so we get dollar sign DB connect. Here we're checking for the uh, error that might have occurred. Connect underscore error number. So if there's an error number, it means we've got a problem. Then what we want to do is we want to echo out dollar sign DB, oops, DB connect. And here we'll tell it to put out the actual error message itself. And we can go fail to connect and put a line break in there and hit save. So now what we want to see happen is it comes into the add, runs this, puts the information to the system, and away we go. Now, what we can add to this is the ability to bounce back to um, the actual index page after we've done that. So here we're just going to add in this brand new command called header, like so. And then we're going to go inside single quotes, we're going to go location. And we're going to tell it that we needed to go to localhost with an ending slash. Save. So if this works, we should go straight back to the page with no problems whatsoever. So let's jump into our browser here, come back, refresh. So Scott's in there, we'll click add user, we've returned, jump over, we'll click on browse. There we go. Our data is now inside the system.